good? All the time. We welcome you this morning on this festival of the Christian home, Mother's Day weekend. We're grateful that God gives us the opportunity to be together to worship. If you are joining us by live stream, we extend greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior to you as well. We're thankful that God gives us the opportunity to serve together. We reach out to the least, the last, the lonely, the left out. In visible ways, we are making a difference for the kingdom as we heed Jesus' words, when you do it to the least of these, you do it also unto me. Along those lines, really, uh, it would help us greatly if you would consider hosting a meal for our Revive Recovery. They meet on Wednesday evenings. Uh, the light supper is at 6 o'clock, followed by a 6.30 worship service. That is growing. There's a sign-up sheet in the main entryway of the church. You can ask Ben Randolph for more complete information, but really a, a light supper for 25 or so folk, uh, it would be a big help to us as we uh, uh, continue to sort of reinstitute and reemerge from things. We have started the meals again there, which has been a blessing uh, to many. So consider utilizing your gifts as well in helping us to make a difference there. Again, we're glad that you're here. Let's stand and join together in our call to worship that you'll find printed in your bulletin. <clears throat> Blessed are those who call upon the name of the Lord. They will find wisdom for living and encouragement for the journey. They will stand in the day of trouble and not be overcome. They will encounter a God who is always with them, even to the very end. Let us worship the Lord who is in this place and calls us to follow. Be mindful of those around us. The hymn is number 185, When Morning Gilds the Skies. Let's pray together this morning. Good and gentle God, we pray in gratitude for our mothers and for all women who have joined with you in the wonder of bringing forth new life. You who became human through a woman grant to all mothers the courage that they need to face the uncertain future that life with children always brings. Give them the strength to live and to be loved in return. Give them the faithful support of husband, family, and friends as they care for the physical and spiritual growth of their children. Give them joy and delight in their children to sustain them through the trials of motherhood. 
Most of all, give them the wisdom to turn to you for help when they need it most. Lord, we give thanks for all those who care for others as their own, the mothers that take on many different forms, who simply share in loving and nurturing others, for those who share tenderness and joy with those who might not even find it in their own homes, for they are the motherly motherly saints of your kingdom. And finally, Lord, we remember the mothers who have gone on before us. Let us rejoice that their home is on eternity's shore with you. Bless our worship, Lord. Bless Ken's message for us today. Lord, be with us that we might grow in the knowledge and grace of your son, Jesus. We pray these things in the name of Christ, our Lord, who taught his disciples to pray, saying these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Please know that your giving continues to make a wonderful difference in our mission and ministry together. We reach out beyond these walls to others in so many different ways. Our regular giving is very impactful in the lives of many. Our special giving, many of you have given through United Methodist Committee on Relief with the Ukrainian uh, relief efforts. We're, we're really leading the way in that in many ways, uh, well into the over the $15,000 mark just for that. So we appreciate that and the difference that we are making uh, on behalf of Jesus Christ. We do hope that you, if you so desire, use the e-giving tab. You can make your donation here. You can mail it in. Uh, visit our website frequently. A lot going on. Next weekend, we'll be uh, recognizing our graduating seniors in a 1045 service. Also, there's online registration uh, for our Vacation Bible School. If you know of someone, a child, a grandchild, uh, a related person, a person in your neighborhood, We've put this information out on all of our social media platforms, so forward that along if you would. Uh, Share it in whatever fashion that you can. Help get persons registered for our Bible school. It will be upon us June 13, 14, and 15 before we know it, so we're looking forward to that time very much. Also, the blue prayer request cards there in your pew. If you have a specific request that you would like to make, you can fill out one of those prayer request cards. Our prayer stewards will be collecting those during our final prayer hymn and making intercession at the, offer, uh, at the altar on our behalf. Also, extend Christian sympathy and prayers, especially to John Haley and his family on the death of his father. His funeral service was yesterday in Ohio. We surround the Haley family with prayers for comfort and peace. Some promises from Romans 8 that have helped persons navigate the difficult times of life. Wonderful promises concerning the love of Christ in Romans 8, the affirmation of faith that we will use this morning printed there in your bulletin. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? No, in all things we are more than conquerors through the one who loved us. We are sure that neither death nor life, nor angels nor principalities, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. The words are printed there in your bulletin that you might follow along. Wonderful text to the word and music as the choir shares, We Come to Thee. Thank you. 
As you are able, will you give witness to your faith and stand for the reading of the 23rd Psalm? The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all of the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. <clears throat> Mothers, shepherds, and God himself. In these very familiar words from the 23rd Psalm, we read once again the wonderful shepherding presence of our Lord. But it has much in common also with motherly care. Maybe that's why the prophet Isaiah says in chapter 66, as a mother comforts her child, so will I comfort you, saith the Lord. These words from the 23rd Psalm have sustained generations of believers through the most difficult of times. And so this morning, let's be reminded again of what exactly we receive and encounter when we come into the presence of our shepherding God, the one who cares for his children as a mother comforts her child. Well, first of all, in the Lord's presence, needs are met. Needs are met. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I may be the only one here, but when I first, as a very small child, learned that verse, because of the way people stated it, I didn't understand it. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. No, wait a minute, I want him to be my shepherd. How, how could this be, right? This is the way my mind was interpreting it at the time until later on my mother explained to me, no, no, it means that you will, you will want for nothing. Your needs will be met. Oh, that makes sense, but I'll tell you what, even as she explained that to me at a young age, and it made sense, it's made even more sense as I've grown older. Because it's true, in the shepherding presence of our Lord, we want for nothing. Our needs are met. Maybe that's why the Apostle Paul said in Philippians, My God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Friends, I tell you today, whatever need you may have in your life, the meeting of that need is present here. That is, it's present because the living Lord God is present with us. In his presence, all of your needs can be met. Some of those needs you may reveal to no one. They're, they're at a depth that you really can't even express to anyone or want to express to anyone. He knows what that need is. He knows the deepest need within your heart. And he's able to meet that need. Again, I say to you, all, all that's available to you, everything you need to meet your needs is here in the presence of the living Lord. So place yourself in his hands again today. Know of his shepherding presence in your life. Some of you may remember some time ago I shared this in one of the devotionals or, or Bible studies, but I had a math teacher in high school had him for several math uh, subjects, all the way through calculus, in fact. And one time I remember in one of those advanced mathematics classes, he came in, it was a test day. He handed us, he handed it out, and there was only one problem on the test. That always made me nervous. One problem, that's it. And he said, now you probably noticed this is going to be an extremely difficult problem. And there's 12 or 13 of us in the class, small class. He said, but I've helped you out. Now, this tells you how long ago it was, young people, so just bear with me. But he said, I've put some scientific calculators around the room. Oh, those scientific calculators when they came out, man, those were big stuff, right? I've put those calculators around the room. You can use your textbooks. I've even brought in some textbook from my college classes that I took. 
You can use those. You can ask a neighbor. Use, use every resource in the room. I'll let you do all of that to come up with the solution. So we did. And none of us came up with the solution. We decided that he had tricked us. He'd given us an impossible problem to solve. And maybe if you remember what I said, because at the end he said to us, well, all of you failed in one regard. You did not use every resource in the room available to you. And we wait a second. Yes, we did, Mr. Moses. The calculator's here. The books, we ask one another. He goes, no, because no one came up to my desk and asked me for the answer. I would have given it to you. What? You didn't tell us. What? I'm one of the resources in the room, he said. You could have come up. I would have helped you work it out. And we would have come up with the answer. Now, as was his case many times, he was trying to teach us more than mathematics. He was saying the resources are around you. Open your eyes. See those resources that you need and connect yourself with them. So I say again to you, everything that you need to have your needs fully met is here. In the presence, in the presence of the living God, present here, present all along your journey, in his shepherding presence, friends, your needs can be met. Place yourself in his hands today. Secondly, in the Lord's presence, nourishment is constant. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. That image for the sheep, <laughs> wonderful, right? Green pastures everywhere. Certainly in that region, uh, that was a very seasonal thing. Here's green pastures. Here's all the nourishment that you need. All of the food that you desire is available for you. And so also for us, my friends, in the shepherding presence of our Lord, our souls find their true nourishment in a connected relationship with Christ Jesus, the good shepherd of us all. That's where nourishment is found. People will try to nourish their spirits and they will try to nourish their soul in other ways today. But friends, that would only leave them more famished in the end. True, lasting, eternal nourishment only comes through the shepherding presence of our God. Now, to be honest, this particular part of nourishment was easy for me to apply on this Mother's Day weekend because if, you've ever, if you would have ever go with me still to this day to my mother's house, the very first thing that would happen when we walked in after the greeting, she would say, can I get you something to eat? I've got plenty. Anybody want anything to eat? That's always the nourishment is constant and available. In fact, we always joke, we could look in my mom's refrigerator and see nothing. We don't have anything to eat. First thing you know, an hour later, here's a full spread of a meal right there on the table, right? Nourishment always available, perhaps sometimes more than I needed or deserved. But it was there. It was there. In fact, uh, some years ago when uh, Charlie and I and some of the others were, were working uh, with, with the youth, we'd have youth lock-ins and my mom was still able to come and she would, uh, the way we'd close the lock-in the next morning, we'd go up to the parsonage uh, and she fixed biscuits and gravy and bacon and eggs. And we had this huge spread right out there. It was amazing how the lock-in attendants the next year kind of bumped up just a little bit, right? Because they knew what was, what was on the way. I remember in college, I remember in college, a friend of mine said, and I'd never heard of this, you know, rural upbringing. He said, hey, we're going to go up to this restaurant. They have an endless buffet. That's what they call the smorgasbord, an endless buffet. I said, oh, okay, fine. So we went up to the endless buffet after we finished, he said, what'd you think? I said, guys, if, that, if that's your definition of an endless buffet, you need to make a visit with me to my mom's house because that was nothing. That was nothing. My point is, there in my household and still to this day, whatever food or nourishment, you're not going to lack. There will be no lacking for that. And friends, so it also in your life. Know today that the, when, when, when your strength is failing, when you're growing weary in life, where can you reach for the nourishment that you need to be sustained and strengthened? The shepherding presence of our Lord, the one who cares for his children as a mother cares for her child. Third, in the Lord's presence, nothing will terrify. Probably other than verse 1, verse 4 is probably the most oft-quoted verse of Psalm 23. Yea, though I walk, 
Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thy, thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. There's no need to be terrified by the circumstances or situations of life. The psalmist talks about fearing no evil. He's talking about that kind of fear which terrifies and paralyzes. I, I want to say that today because sometimes people say, well, I have some fears. Listen, fear is a normal human emotion. It's not talking about that kind of fear, the, the normal fears that we all have that are a part of life. We all have those. In fact, I had a, a man in one of my churches that was in the military. He was a leader. He said, anytime I had a young man that said he had absolutely no fear in the battlefield, he goes, I was more scared of him than the other people because he wasn't going to be aware. He wasn't going to be cautious. He wasn't going to be looking. He was fooling himself if he didn't think there was, that fear was a natural part of being in that environment. So we're not talking about, we're talking about the normal fears that we have. They're there. But friends, fearing no evil, no evil, it's not going to get the upper hand. And when you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death will not have the upper hand. That which terrifies us need not terrify us because thou art with me. In God's presence, my friends, there is the way to overcome those terrifying moments or those things that threaten to paralyze us in place due to our fears. Every now and then, I still, I just one of my favorites, I guess you could say, in terms of uh, going online and watching some things, but I, I still like to watch every now and then uh, the videos and the reports with the miracle on the Hudson. Do you remember that? January, it's been January 2009 when that U.S. air flight got hit with the birds and lost its engines and Captain Sully landed it successfully on the Hudson River. Remember that? That still fascinates me to this day. I can go back and watch that. And, of course, since then, movies and interviews and all sorts of things have occurred with that. They even put people in simulators. I'm sure you've seen that. They put people in simulators that tried to actually redo that, and they couldn't do it in the simulator. But he was able to successfully land on that Hudson River. I remember one in particular. It was several months after the event. Uh, you know, a lot of interviews from the passengers came out afterwards. And they were talking to this one gentleman, typical, you know, what did you feel? Where were you seated? How did you get out? What were people doing? All of this. At the end of it, he finally said, well, I'll just say this. If it had to happen, and I'm sorry it did, but if it had to happen, I'm just glad that Captain Sully was the pilot. If it had to happen, I'm just glad that he was the pilot. I kind of feel like that in terms of my faith journey. Let me explain that a moment, but maybe some of you remember years ago, there used to be those bumper stickers uh, that said, Jesus is my co-pilot. I don't know if you remember that. And then finally they went away because finally someone realized, wait a second, we don't want Jesus to be our co-pilot. We want Jesus to be our pilot, right? Not the co-pilot. So, so you don't really see those bumper stickers much anymore. But in terms of my faith, I, I'll only testify personally to you today and you can decide where it impacts your life. But here's what I'll say. If the difficulties in life have to happen, and they will happen, if things that break my heart and cause me grief have to happen, and they will, if moments are going to come my way that are tragic, and very problematic, and they will. And finally, if one day death comes knocking at my door, and it will, then I give thanks and praise to God that the shepherd of the 23rd Psalm is in the pilot seat. I give praise and thanks to God that he's the one navigating us through what could be terrifying moments, but aren't because he's present. Friends, in the presence of the Lord, nothing need terrify you. Place yourself in his hands today. Finally, in the shepherding presence of our Lord, Newness lasts forever. New life 
extends from here into eternity. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is the promise. When we decide that the Lord Jesus Christ is our shepherd, then the new life that he offers us, yes, it begins now, but it takes all the way through the dimensions of eternity forever and ever, dwelling in the house of the Lord. This is the promise that is ours in Jesus Christ. New life. New life. Brad Karras talks about his scout leader. He said he was in Boy Scouts, and he said one thing that his scout master always did that drove them all crazy. Couldn't stand it. He said we'd go on our campouts, and he said when it came time to wake up the next day, he said our scout master had a cowbell, and he would walk among our tents, and he would clang that cowbell, and then he would say, rise and shine. It's a brand new day, new start, do-overs galore, redemption, gentlemen, second chances, a brand spanking new day, so roll out. <laughs> I had to write that down from his article. Brad, Brad Karras says we couldn't stand that because we didn't want to roll out. We were teenagers, we'd probably stayed up too late talking to one another in the tent and the morning chill was there. We'd just as soon pull our sleeping bags up a little tighter and keep sleeping. But there it was, every morning, the cowboy, the cowbell, rise and shine. It's a brand new day, redemption, gentlemen. Second chances, it's a brand spanking new day, so roll out. Karis paying tribute to his scout leader, by the way, he was a pallbearer at his funeral, and he said, appropriate the family on the, on the stone, it says, a new day, so roll out. But looking back, Kara says, I couldn't stand that <laughs> litany as a teen, but I realize now that our scoutmaster was not just trying to wake us up that morning, but he was trying to wake us up to a perspective on life a perspective on life. Friends, I say to you, in the shepherding presence of our Lord, the one who cares for his children as a mother comforts her children, here in this very place, with the Lord Jesus Christ present, no matter what's occurring in your life, rise and shine. It's a brand new day, a new start, do-overs galore, redemption, ladies and gentlemen, second chances. It's a brand spanking new day. So roll out. Roll out of this place, out into the life that God has for you, living for him, taking confidence in his shepherding presence. Thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Oh God, you know that sometimes when it comes to this journey, we are navigationally challenged we need more than anything your direction and guidance you know from time to time the emptiness we feel on the inside and how we sometimes look in many different ways to fill up that empty space come to us again as the shepherd that you are meet our needs nourish our souls calm our fears Help us to embrace the new life that you give. We are mindful of many who may need to know that shepherding presence today. And we pray for them in these moments. In our own families or friendship circles or social arenas, there are many who need the nourishment that you alone can provide. We pray for them in these moments. And we pray, O oh Lord, for our church, that we would be witnesses in our world in a way that would point others to the Good Shepherd Jesus Christ. Help us by our words, attitudes, and actions 
to reflect your presence to others. We pray for our church. And we pray for our world, O oh God, a world that needs shepherd perhaps more than in any other time. May your everlasting arms of comfort and peace begin to enfold our globe again. We pray for our world in these moments. We thank you that we can bring all things to you, knowing that you are with us in all things. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. As you continue to reflect upon these things for your own faith journey, as we sing our closing hymn, if you would like to come to the altar yourself to pray, you may do that. The side hallways lead there. Our prayer stewards will also be walking the aisle, collecting any prayer cards that you may have or prayer requests, and they'll be making intercession on our behalf. Mindful of those around us, we stand and share verses 1, 2, and 4 of Savior, like a shepherd, lead us. To be in the house of the Lord on this day. We're grateful for your attendance, your attendance and worship already as a witness to the power of God's kingdom in our world today. We thank you for that. We thank you, thankful for all of those who shared our many different worship services, six each week. Today at Maplewood, uh, Tim Morgan was holding forth there. We appreciate Tim's uh, helping and all of the lay pastors who are involved in this work. Friends, we have been blessed. We're blessed with the shepherding presence of our Lord who loves us and promises to meet all of our needs. We receive that blessing, but we go forth, we roll out to share that blessing with all. In his name, we depart to serve. Amen.